to total victory and keeping the devil under your feet. It simply says, do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. somebody who's really in the process of persecuting you. Sometimes it's a little bit easier if it's something that happened four or five years ago and you've had a little time to get over it, but when you're still in the midst of it, and that attack's coming daily, maybe people are telling lies about you, and they're saying and doing things to harm your reputation, or, or they've really just abandoned you in your time of need. And God says, pray for them. Bless them. Cover them. Don't even tell other people what a rotten scoundrel they are. <laughs> Overcome evil with good. And you know, God doesn't tell us to do those things just to watch us try to do something hard. He tells us to do that because it's good for us. Satan has attacked and he's brought hurt, he's brought harm. But the way to overcome it is to do the exact opposite of what would be natural and reach back out in love and act like God. Amen? I've spent a lot of time in the last number of years studying for myself and trying to teach people about the love walk. And one of the things that I think the church has, and when I say the church, I don't mean this church or any particular church, I just mean the church worldwide. One of the things that I think that we've let slip, but hopefully is coming back to the forefront again, is world missions. <laughs> Jesus said, go ye into all the world, yeah. and preach the gospel to every creature, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And the Holy Ghost. Now God calls different people to go in different ways. He called Paul and his family to actually physically go, to leave their home, to leave their comforts, and go. But people can't go and do things if they don't have people that will go alongside of them in prayer and financially helping make those things happen. Every single believer Every person who calls themselves a Christian needs to give to missions and you need to give to the poor. Amen. There's so many promises that God makes in His Word to those who minister to the poor, the needy, the downtrodden, the oppressed, and those who are in a situation where they're having injustices done to them. And somebody needs to come and bring justice for them. Amen? A scripture that I'd like to share with you, and then I'm going to show you a video presentation of our world missions. That you get a, a look at some of the things that are going on around the world. And you know, please, when you watch this tonight, it's about eight minutes. I don't want you to just look at it like we've gone around and collected sad pictures to move you emotionally. <laughs> I know that you, you see these things on TV and it's very easy to just get used to it and think, eh, you know, other ones are kid. But you know what? Think. And what if it was you? What if it was you? What if it was your child? What if you were the one that was sick and had no hope of any kind of medical care unless somebody brought that to you? You know, Job, the book of Job teaches us that reaching out to the poor and the needy was the standard for righteousness in his day. You were not even considered a righteous person if you weren't reaching out to help bring justice to injustices. God is a God of justice, and I think that's probably one of my favorite things about God. And you know what that means simply? He makes wrong things right. And so often we look at something and we say, well, that's just not right. And somebody needs to do something. <laughs> Don't we? We know something needs to be done, but somehow or another it escapes.
escapes us than it possibly could be us. There's so many unhappy Christians. Christians ought not to be unhappy. What is wrong with us? If we've got everything, we're going to heaven, God lives in us, and we're unhappy. And I know why. I've studied it long enough. I've experienced it myself. I know why. You cannot be selfish and happy. I'm going to die telling people that. You cannot be selfish and happy. <laughs> Jesus said, forget yourself, lose sight of yourself, and all your own interests, and take up your cross and follow me. Our cross is not cancer and poverty and disasters. It's living an unselfish life. It's getting up every day and asking God what you can do for Him and what you can do to make somebody else's life better. It's not ask, giving God your 20-point list of everything you have to have that day in order to just stay saved. <laughs> Come on, Pastor. <laughs> this is my exhortation. I'm getting excited over it. We're going to put these scriptures up. I want to show them to you because they really impacted my life. Job 29, 12. Because I delivered the poor who cried, and the fatherless, and him who had no one to help him, the blessing of him who was about to perish came on me, and I caused the widow's heart to sing for joy. God has a special place in his heart for widows and orphans. Yep. I put on righteousness. I love that. I put on righteousness. You know, in Ephesians 6, when it talks about spiritual warfare, it says to put on the breastplate of righteousness. How do you put on righteousness? This is one of the ways you put it on. And it clothed me, or it clothed itself with me. My justice was like a robe and a turban, or a diadem and a crown. I was eyes to the blind, and feet was eyes of the lame. I was a father to the poor and the needy, and the cause of him I did not know, I searched out. We've gotten very aggressive at Joyce Meyer Ministries in this area, and we actually go out looking for people to help. We don't just wait for them to come and ask us, although there are plenty of those, but we actually go out to various parts of the world, and we look for people that we can help. Our son David's the head of our world missions, and he goes on on just searching mission trips. He'll go to an area where we've never been to and he'll go in and start communicating with the churches and just start finding out what their needs are and what we can do to help them. And as a result of that, we've been able to not only bring the gospel to people in a large part of the world through television and internet and radio and printed material and things like that, but we also several times a year go to these places and in about two weeks I'll be going to Malawi which is, I think, the second or third poorest nation in Africa, where people just live in conditions that you could not even imagine. Literally, our dogs in America live better than a lot of people do in the world. Yep. But the thing that really disturbs me is sometimes in the midst of their total nothingness, they are happier. So don't think that stuff can make you happy because it really don't. It has no ability. There's nothing in it that has the ability to make you happy. It's nice to have. God wants to bless us. Hey, we all like nice things. There's nothing wrong with that. If you don't have anything, you can't give anything. So by all means, pray for prosperity, but let's make it prosperity with a purpose. Amen. Many of you think we need to have a good purpose in what we ask God. And so we're going to show you this uh, media presentation. I've been to all these places, touched these people. They're there. They're real. They're hurting. And if you could see what it means to them for somebody to come and just offer them a little bit of hope. It's just, it's the greatest thing, the greatest thing that you can ever experience. And I hope that all of you at some time in your life will get to go on a long-term or a short-term missions trip. But if you don't, you need to go by partnering with other people who are going. And make sure that when you stand before God, you know that you did your best to relieve human suffering. Amen. So take a look at this.